Gamers, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to rig this wooden car, and we're going to have it interact with our scene using Tyflow. In order to access the Craft Rector Studio plugin, you need to go to the Utility menu. And if you don't see it, you need to go to Configure Button Sets and add it into the menu. Then you hit OK, and now it's accessible. So if we start Director Studio here, and we go to the main menu, select Create Vehicle Tool, and select Four Wheeler Extended, we can add in a brand new rig into our scene. Now in order to get that Craft Studio rig working with our vehicle, we need to scale and position it roughly into position so that it matches the orientation and scale of the wooden vehicle. Once the rig roughly lines up to where we want it, we're going to have to process our original mesh so that we can link individual pieces of it to the rig. In this case, my car model is just one solid object, so we're going to have to select each of the wheels and attach them so that they're separate. So once all of the wheels are detached, if we go to the pivot menu, we can center all of their pivots so that they're aligned into the center of each of the wheels. Then we're going to unhide the mesh of the car rig, and I'm going to link the body of the car mesh to the main body of the rig. Now before I link the wooden wheels to the car rig, let's just make sure that they're properly aligned. If we select the rig of the wheels and hit Alt A, we can then align it to our wooden wheel mesh. I'm going to then repeat this step for each of the wheels. Now the reason we do this is because the rig itself is what craft animation is going to be animating, and our mesh is just going to be matching those animations. So that's why we want to make sure that everything is aligned, so that when the rig wheels are spinning, our uh, mesh that we want to link to it is spinning properly at the right pivot. So once everything is aligned, what we want to do is we want to link the wooden car wheels to the wheels of the car rig. And then I'm going to repeat that step for each of the wheels. So you can see now, when I pull one of the wheels from the car rig out, our mesh follows along properly. So that pretty much completes all the steps for the car rig. But we need to have some kind of input configured. So if we go to Tool, Inputs, and we select the keyboard preset, what it does is it means that the up, down, left and right arrow keys are going to be able to act as inputs when we're recording the car rig. Now, before we hit record, let's unhide everything in our scene. And then I'm going to show you these preset cameras that Craft Animations create. If we go to the follow cam and then hit record, you'll see that the camera will follow along behind our vehicle so that we can see what we're actually recording. And now you can see that you can actually control the vehicle using the arrow keys. So it's pretty handy, it's pretty cool. Um, and you can just record as many takes as you want until you get the animation that you like. So you can see some of the other preset cameras that they create here are also the driver cam and then a top-down view cam. You can just kind of cycle between these in order to find a view that allows you to record the animation a little easier. One thing you'll notice though is that I'm driving through these meshes. So in a little bit, I'm going to show you how we can adjust the car rig so that we can actually interact with all of the elements in our scene. First things first though, I'm just going to optimize the scene a little bit and move around some of the elements for the animation. So while I'm working on this, I want to talk a little bit about the workflow. We're not going to actually be able to interact with anything in our scene in real time. Meaning that when we're driving around and recording a take in craft animation, we're not going to actually see it hitting objects and have them fall over, for instance. What we're going to do is we're going to have the Jenga pieces in our scene as a reference object, do our take of the recording, and then afterwards in Tyflow, we're going to simulate the reaction to the vehicle. Another thing I did was I added those Jenga pieces into their own selection set. Because later on in Tyflow, it's just going to allow us to add those into our simulation a lot easier. 
So that looks pretty good. Let's hide all of the Jenga pieces for now because we're going to use those later on. And as I was referring to earlier, I want to select all the pieces in my scene right now that I want the craft animation recording to interact with. So in this case, it's going to be the track and a few of these objects in the background, just in case. So once I have all of the objects in my scene selected, let's add them to their own selection set as well. Then let's go into craft animation and let's unhide the car rig. Now you can see this red arrow in our scene. Anything that is linked to this arrow will be interactable by our car rig. So using that selection set we just set up, let's link all of those objects to the red arrow. And I'm going to have to do the floor as well. It's one thing I missed. Because otherwise, if we record, the car will just fall through the ground. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and hide the car rig again. And then let's set it to the follow cam so we can set another take. So you can see as I drive now that the car actually goes and bumps over those meshes. So all of the meshes that we selected before and linked to the red arrow are now interactive as we drive. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the tie flow simulation so that they interact with the vehicle as it drives by. Let's unhide those Jenga pieces so we can now add them to our tie flow scene. And we're going to create a new tie flow setup. Let's add in a birth objects operator. And using the selection set, we can add selected so that they are now in our simulation. And let's change the material to inherit from object. Next, we're going to add in a physics shape. This is going to give the Jenga pieces their own collision meshes. And we're going to leave the collision type to convex hull. We're also going to need a physics collision operator. And in here, we're going to put all of the objects that we want those Jenga pieces to interact with. So as they collide, we don't only want them to collide with the ground, we also want them to collide with this wooden ramp and any surrounding objects. Lastly, let's put in our wooden vehicle. And we're going to have to change the hull type here from convex to mesh. And you'll see why. If I change it to display hull, you can see what collision mesh is actually being generated and it's really low poly and doesn't really match. So once we change it to mesh, you can see it's a lot more graphically intense, but it's a lot more accurate. Finally, let's add in a mesh operator so that we can render this and export it in our scene. We're now ready to do our final take. So let's disable the tie flow simulation for now, and I'm gonna unhide those original Jenga pieces just for reference. So as we're driving, we're going to see exactly where we need to drive in order to hit them. So now, once we stop that take, and we re-enable the tie flow simulation, and hide those original Jenga pieces, you're going to see that our scene is now set up correctly. The vehicle is going to interact with those pieces in the tie flow simulation, and they're going to start to fall over. One thing I forgot to do here is I forgot to disable the display on that hull. Um, so let's just do that so it's not distracting. And there you go. So you can see as I scrub through the timeline, the animation on the recording is playing, and our tie flow simulation is reacting accordingly. If I just change up the view here, you can see what's going on. So that was basically it. Because it's all dynamic, you can do as many takes with Craft Director Studio as you want. And because you already set up everything with tie flow, it's also going to automatically update its animations to match your take. So after that, once I was happy with the animation, I brought everything into NVIDIA Omniverse Create in order to render it. I selected all of my static meshes first, then I went to File, Export, Export Selected, and I set it to Single because there's no animation within the timeline. For the second piece, I selected the wooden vehicle, 
And then I did the same. I went to File, Export, Export Selected, and I made sure to choose an Alembic Mesh again. The only difference this time is that I set it to Range, so that all of the animation across my timeline was saved. And lastly, for our Jenga pieces, because it's in tie flow, we're going to need to use an Export Particles operator. And I'm going to set it from tie cache to Alembic Mesh. All the other settings we can leave the same. The only thing I'm going to change is the output path. Then we can hit save and generate a Lembic file. So that was basically all I had to do in 3ds Max. From here, I went into NVIDIA Omniverse Create and I inserted each of those exported Alembic files as a sublayer. And then all I had to do was I just played around with some lighting, some camera angles, and I put it all together using the sequence extension. So you can see it kind of open here that, you know, you're able to jump between all these different camera angles quickly and lay out your animation. But either way, hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.